And welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ehuke Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today down on the palace grounds of Iolani Palace in Honolulu. We got a great guest for you, so let's go on over and meet him. Tane, uh -huh. how are you? Hi, aloha mai. Aloha. How you been? Oh, good. Good to see you. This is Tane. It's been a long time. It's aloha. been a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tane, we wanted to have you on the show because the truth is, it's not been a long time. When I'm online, I see your emails all the time. You're one of the most active activists that I know. And yeah. you do it all right from your desk. Right. You know, there are, for the movement, on, on you know, you go online on Yahoo, you can create these Yahoo chat groups where lots of people can join. Right. They can chat with each other. They can be all over the world, you know, wherever they are geographically, and have these open, huge conversations. And so you're a member of a lot of, a lot of those uh, chat groups like Hawaii Independence, and what are some of the other names? Uh, well, uh, I respond to Living Nation, Living Nation Boo, Boo, yeah. uh blogs, a variety of blogs, yeah, uh, as well as uh, the Hawaiian Independence, which is basically for Hawaiian independent thinkers. Aha, so we have two meanings there, not only independence for Hawaii, but people who are independent thinkers. Correct. Aha, very good. Because we have so many Hawaiians that aren't really uh, group prone, you know, they don't like to be part of a group. Right. Uh, and uh, be restricted by their guidelines and their rules. Well, the other thing is, come on, let's walk this way. Sure. The other thing is that a lot of people, you know, through no fault of their own, have bought the lie that Hawaii is part of the United States, yes? Right. So they don't know any different because they really haven't looked into it. But let me go back. I want to go back and because you're, like I said, you're one of the most active activists I know. <laughs> and that's a compliment, by the way. Um, what got you involved in this movement to begin with? Uh, I started at a very young age and primarily it's because, you know, when you, you go with your tutus when they have their hen parties. Yeah. And they say, oh, Mal, just sit there, you know. Yeah. You're to be seen and not heard. Right. And this is where I picked up a lot of things. And then I, really? uh, after my uh, grandparents, well, grandparents, after their friends leave, then I started asking questions. And then uh, sooner or later, you'd find some of that topic would be discussed by them. Right. You know, the next visit. So as a young kid, you sat there and listened while they talked, and you learned a lot of this stuff, a lot of this information. A lot of the issues yeah and you got it from a generation that wasn't too far removed from when it happened yeah correct wow because that's... back then uh, I think uh, one of the major topics that was still going on was the Macy case really like it happened you know uh, last year all the little gossips you right. know, would come out and then of course there'd be things like um, things that they say that I pick up on, and I used to question a lot. You used yeah. to question them? Question them, question myself, think about things. If they say that uh, this is the way it is, then, you know, not knowing back then I was doing uh, critical thinking. Yeah. But a lot of the things that I thought and, and uh, sorted out, I knew but I didn't know their definitions. Gotcha. Like today, they have gotcha. definitions saying, oh, well, uh, that's occupation and that's, right. uh, you know. Right. I, I never knew those terminologies, but I knew what was right, what was wrong, and what was going on, yeah. and what fit and what didn't fit. So before the computer age, I was writing letters. So. <laughs> Uh, I'd write letters to the, the major newspapers, Star mm -hmm. Bolton, Advertiser, and, mm -hmm. you know, give off my own uh, mana'o about things or question what, what they wrote that didn't seem right. And, uh, of course, some of it was indignant. I, I just didn't know how to temper myself sure, very of well. of course, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> happens to the best of us, you know. <laughs> and then uh, what happened was that... Uh, 
I also wrote to European Parliament, um, the UN, the different really? organizations. Oh, yeah. Wow, and this was years ago before the computer. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. If not, it would have been easier doing it through the computer. Right. You know, because then uh, right. it saved me a hell of a lot of money. Right. Because the stamps alone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that cost right. me a lot. Uh, I did get responses from uh, European Union. Yeah. Um, that particular issue dealt with our, our cousins in Tahiti. Uh -huh. That was when they were still doing the, um, the nuclear... Proliferation and all that stuff down there. The nuclear testing. The testing, yeah. the yeah. underground, underwater yes. testing. Yes. And I felt that that affects us here. Mm -hmm. And what they do to them in, in uh, French Polynesia, they're doing to us here in yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, because of our connections, our roots, uh, just the fact that they're doing it to an island nation, this is what we're being faced with here. Mm -hmm. Because my parents uh, worked for the military. I come from a military town, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, there were certain guidelines that uh, my parents uh, uh, established for us, and that was uh, to go ahead and learn the tools. So we had to learn to speak uh, English. Uh, speaking uh, pigeon was out of the question, uh -huh. except for when we're with our friends, you know. Sure. So then it's uh, there's a time and a place for it. Sure. In other words, sure, sure, sure. And so that's the way we were raised. Then my parents would always tell us that you know we have to remember. We kids have to remember that those kapoi haole are just as good as we are. Uh -huh. You know, because sometimes you can get a little arrogant. Yeah, well, <laughs> somehow they play with words. When I got older, then I realized, uh, you know, the, the intelligence that they, they did and used on us. Right. And because we, in my family, we weren't raised to be ashamed of being Hawaiian. Aha, uh -huh. wow. Wow. I mean, that's, that's foreign yeah. to us. Yeah. And then growing up, when I started to hear other people voice that, uh, we couldn't phantom the logic of it. Because we learned a lot of our Hawaiian-ness. It wasn't like, oh, this is Hawaiian and this is Kapoi Haole. And, and to us, Haole, the word Haole is more foreign, means foreign. Mean foreigners rather than that's, Caucasians. That's the way, yeah. 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 Yeah, and Kapoi Haole, Haole mean foreigners, the, the foreign people. Foreigners. Yeah. Tani, how old were you when you first started to sit there and listen to these conversations? Oh, I was about eight. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. To talk about how independent I was, I was sent to St. Michael's Wailua. Yeah. <laughs> Kindergarten. And I had enough of school. And I decided uh, I'm not going to have any more. I'm going back to my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. So I started walking. I walked out of the classroom, started walking. Now, Waihiwa is several miles away from Wailua. And that's where the, the school was the located. School and then the house. Yeah, okay. so I'm walking so about maybe roughly about two miles away from the school. There. <laughs> then a, a Coca-Cola truck stops by and right. he says, oh, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to my Vovo's house, you know, which means grandmother in Portuguese. And I said, oh, well, come on, I'll take you there. So what happened was that I hopped on, I got there. By the time he dropped me off, because I knew where I was going, right? My parents and my grandparents came home and they were there waiting for me. Because I grew up while they claim it was still the territory. And so being a territory, some things uh, was applicable and some things were not, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we had a, a, back in the late 50s, we had uh, two Miss Hawaii's running for Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. But then once uh, 59 came about and 1960, uh, they couldn't run. Mm -hmm. So it shows that they were considered independent. Yeah. The same thing like a uh, military back then would always refer us as a foreign country. 
and the continental U.S. was regarded as the states. Mm -hmm. So everything, you know, they had different thoughts back yeah. then. So, Tani, I know that uh, you're online a lot with uh, on uh, many of the Yahoo chat groups. Right. Um, and, you know, for myself, uh, I feel like a lot of the education I get is from your emails that I read that you send to everybody because you spend a lot of time researching the issues. Correct. And that's based on, on what you said going all the way back to age eight. <laughs> that's important to you being an independent thinker. Right. And, you know, throughout the weeks and, and months and years, those of us who were part of those conversation groups on Yahoo, we tend to, our awareness and knowledge tends to get broadened by people like you. And what has it been like? So I've been telling you what it's like from the receiving end. What's it been like for you from the giving end to disperse that kind of, share that kind of knowledge with everybody? Well, I know that uh, sales and marketing, right, is basically of what they're trying to sell to you. Right. In my case, it's understanding what they're trying to do and try to counter it. Uh -huh. So often what happens, uh, what gets my dander up a lot of times is when misinformation or disinformation is put out there and I know contrary to it. So I have to give a voice to counter a lot of that. Oh, and yes. so I would uh, go ahead and dig up my resources as well as uh, try to remember who said what and everything, you know, and evaluate the whole thing. Uh, I I've, thank God for the computers because now it's easier to tap in you know, to a lot of uh, sites to investigate. Uh, Library of Congress is a wealth of uh, mm -hmm. information. That's where I got a lot of stuff. What I did was stop to think about uh, different aspects. And, you know, because uh, arguments aren't uh, black and white. They're, yeah. Lots of gray area. Yeah. yeah. And there's different perceptions and concepts and interpretation. And you got to bring all that out. And that's what I try to do, you know, tell the other side of the story and, and also let them know there's something else that's out there. Mm -hmm. And for them to go ahead and investigate. So I, I basically, what I did uh, in the early years especially was just go and dig in to find all different kind of data. Uh, that's right, I, I wrote out a piece about uh, uh, who was involved and how they thought and where did their concept come from? How was it developed? In the overthrow, you mean? No, just the whole mentality of where did it stem from? I got you. So, you know, uh, in doing so, I, I went back and studied a lot of different things and it naturally brought me to the paper bulls. There were about four of them mm -hmm. that was very damaging and how that was taken over by the Europeans. And then I also studied a little bit about the Europeans were like uh, on the outside of the main civilization. And the main civilization was the, the Middle East and China. Mm, wow. So they learned everything from that to develop theirs. What they did to get into the center mainstream was their industrial period. And that didn't happen until, what, the 1500s? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't start coming into their own until the 1200s. When you say they, you're talking about European culture. European culture, European culture. and their dogma yeah. of Manifest Destiny. The manifest Destiny, which, which came from the Papal Bulls. Correct. Which the Manifest Destiny was the mentality or the philosophy of going and taking over, seizing foreign lands. And right occupying them and dominating them and perpetuating a genocide on the indigenous people there right basically just you know taking over it's like going up to somebody's house kicking in the front door kicking them out maybe killing most of them and taking over their keys and their property exactly, exactly. without their permission yes 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 interesting so yeah so you know it's developing all these different uh, ideas or thoughts of how it all came about. I was just going to say, you're the only guy I've ever known, I've ever come across, 
in the Hawaiian independence movement who stopped and even asked the question, so how did they get this way? What caused them to get to this point where they would come over to Hawaii and perpetuate this and do this? Exactly. That's amazing. And not only that, but then you started to share that information, that research with everybody on these Yahoo chat groups so we can all be enlightened. It's like without you, I wouldn't have known about Manifest Destiny it came from the Papal Bulls, which came from so on and so forth. It's like you've, you've given me the background yeah. against which what's happening now is happening. So I, we have a context to say, you know, I get this, I understand. I begin to understand why this is happening because all that happened back there. Yeah, I try to bring out different things for the the readers so that yeah. they stop and think and they see something a little differently than what is often fed to them. Yeah. You know, you gotta uh, restore your confidence. You gotta restore your your faith in your kupunas and yeah. what they said and and respect a lot of things that they gave us. They taught us. Yes. And yes. that's why I am the way I am, because I had very dynamic uh, kupunas. Obviously so, yes. Of course, uh, my life wasn't devoted strictly by consuming myself with the Hawaiian issues. I had a life to live, a career, a family. You know, you got to take care of all these different responsibilities. But you can find time to, to get into it. You know, all you need is a little uh, time, maybe uh, even a half hour, mm -hmm. you know. Just just get your mind away from uh, your obligations to Kuleana and, and take a circuit breaker so that you can devote maybe, you know, an hour or even a half hour to finding out the truths and things and, and reaching out to other people. That's the same thing like, uh, you know, don't stay home, just get out and, and become active. That's a positive thing. That's a, an obligation. Yeah, yeah, very good. So our viewers at home watching this program, what you're saying to them is they don't have to go in, they don't have to jump in the pool, go down to the deep level. They can start at the shallow level and just do something a little bit, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Right. Research one thing, learn about this thing, you know, look at that thing, one piece of the puzzle each time. Right, and when, when we call people out to come and stand in support, they should already know some of these things. Come out yes. and be supportive. Yes. Be who you are, embrace it. Yes, yeah. yeah, very good. I like to use the right semantics, and this lets you know whether you're in the box or you're stepping outside of the box. The box being? The U.S. box with their definitions. Yes, yes. Uh, it's different. Yeah. Uh, when you step out of the box and you know who you are, you use the correct terminology. You know, they, they redefine everything for you in that box. It's like the difference between being inside a house and outside a house looking, out, you're outside but looking in the window. Yeah, you're when, you, when you're looking in, if you're inside that house, uh, you have to abide by their rules. Yes, yes. And their exactly. interpretation of, of exactly. uh, how they run their household. Yes, yeah. But then when you're outside, you're a free independent thinker. Yeah. You do what uh, you want to do, what you think is right, and what uh, your pursuit of happiness. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds good to me. So specifically, what are what are a couple of the issues that you're looking into right now and researching? Well, right now I'm looking in uh, into the 14th Amendment uh, the because it's of the U.S. Constitution. Really? Why is that? Although it doesn't really uh, pertain to us as a nation, right? But it's to understand where th they're playing, what rules they're playing with. Aha. Uh -huh. And so this is why I've looked into uh, the 14th. Uh, Amendment. So what did you find? What did you discover? I found out basically uh, it's still what I've said from the beginning that when they say uh, all men are created equal they were talking about all the white colonial men that are forming this uh, group or union or country that all of they are, are equal mm -hmm. including the indigenous the white indigenous slaves, it does not include the white women because they had no suffrage. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in their laws and everything, because of uh, legalities, you know, uppercase, lowercase. Mm -hmm. So when they use the uppercase, that's who they are referring to is they and their descendants. Uppercase in the word what? In the word citizen. Aha. Uh -huh. So capital C in the word citizen. Right. Means white male. Correct. Lowercase in the word citizen means anybody. Everybody else. Everybody else. Wow. And so the Constitution is actually protecting the capital C citizens. Not, That's what they're there for. Not the lower. Correct. Case. The lower is just subject to, you know, it's still back into colonialistic uh, thinking. Like women, slaves, so on and so forth. Right. That's amazing. I never knew that. What I found interesting, they use the terminology bayonet, uh -huh. uh, being forced, right, under duress. Like the southern states uh, were bayoneted, in other words, they, they, they were occupied, mm -hmm. militarily occupied, and the North refused to let them back into the Senate and legislature, not unless they agree to support and uh, sign in and incorporate the 14th Amendment. You know, this is sounding awfully familiar. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the bayonet, and, it, and then we had the bayonet constitution here. Right. It's like you say, Under it's, duress. <laughs> it, it's the same old story over and over and over. Yeah, so what I've, what I've been finding out, uh, the more I read is, is how much of it is manipulated just by an elite Small group. Small elite group. Correct. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So how do we get out of that? Uh, right now, uh, the, I would suggest uh, getting educated and using the laws against them. Uh, also, Their own laws against them. Yeah. That would no. help curtail what, what they're doing and at the same time go into international law. It's the arena that we should be fighting in is the international. So we have to recognize what the, the laws of occupation is mm -hmm. and what guidelines are established. Uh, also the idea of our neutrality. Mm -hmm. that Hawaii's Kaui, neutrality. Right. Kaui Keaole did that. Uh, Kamehameha III, III did yes. that. Uh -huh. uh, you know, establish the Hawaiian kingdom, yes. a neutral nation. Yes, yes. So we, we had that, that status. They also uh, was involved in formulating a lot of the the laws for neutrality. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't understand just how involved the Hawaiian Kingdom is mm -hmm. or has been in yep. it. Yep, yep, yep. You know, a couple of questions. You know, we touched upon this a little bit earlier, but somebody who's sitting there at home watching the program right now, yeah. and they're saying, well, shucks, I mean, this guy has been going at it since he was eight years old. He knows a lot. He's been researching it. This guy's, you know, practically a walking library. I'm just little old me. What would you say to them to get them involved? Well, the, basically, it's it's never too late, uh, number one. And the thing is that you do yourself a service to, to find the truth. Take a time, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. In fact, we have uh, groups of us that just come over the house for coffee, sit down, talk story. There's not a debate or anything, but it's, it's uh, trying to define where your thoughts are, uh, venting sometimes, you know, and who can you vent with? <laughs> your friends, of your course. loved ones, right? Yeah. And, and you're more uh, open, you know, with your, your circle of friends, you feel comfortable in, in sharing ideas and thoughts and arguments, you know. Mm -hmm. And you, you'll get the different uh, opinions and you incorporate it yourself individually as an independent thinker, mm -hmm. you weigh and digest and you develop something that you feel in your gut what is true, especially if they're uh, concrete facts. And you look at it, uh, you know, they've done so much character assassination about the Native Hawaiians, about the kingdom, uh, you know, uh, they've kind of devastated everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not uh, American, mm -hmm. then you don't count, right? Yeah. So, Tony, how does the future of Hawaii look to you? 
Uh, I'm very confident that now more and more people are becoming aware of the facts. They can give facts, reasons rather than emotion. Because mm. if you notice, we're moving away from that emotion, you know, that the crybaby emotion, I call it. Mm -hmm. You know, you know something's wrong. You know you've been affected. You know you've been hurt. Your family's been hurt. Your children uh, will suffer for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But now more people are learning the facts, so they're using the facts and say, you can't do that because, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot uh, more stronger case where more people are apt to listen. Mm. And to me, that, that's what I try to do is bring out a lot of these things to weigh and digest. You know, they don't have to believe what I say, just go and dig it up. But I know what I write is, has been, uh, you know, researched uh, quite deeply yes. and for a long time. Yes. And it's just a matter of definition. Yes. <laughs> I've got to get straight. You yes. Know. An independent thinker you are. Yeah. Tani, uh, mahalo for all that you've done for educating me and so many others online. And mahalo for being on Voices of Truth today. It's wonderful to have you on the show. Well, it's great to be here. I know there's a lot of people like me out there, too. Good. We need more every day. <laughs> yeah. And to our viewers, mahalo for watching Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. Remember to watch us online on VoicesOfTruthTV.com. We're there 24-7. You can watch any of our shows anytime you want. Also, our weekly video commentaries on FreeHawaiiTV.com. And, of course, it's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. I'm Ehu Kekahu Cardwell. And until next time, ahui ho!